In this video, I'm going to introduce scenario analysis. So I'll talk about the basics, and then I'll discuss how we can use scenario analysis in valuation work. And then finally, I'll provide a very simple example in Excel. Now the reason we want to use scenario analysis is pretty simple. The future isn't certain. Regardless of our base case or our original model, the model is unlikely to be correct. So we need to model some additional outcomes that are fairly likely. Now there's really two big criteria when you're identifying a scenario. First, you need to select a likely scenario. In the real world, scenarios that are very, very unlikely to occur are probably not going to occur. So we shouldn't waste so much time, especially if we're only choosing or creating three or maybe four different scenarios. And second, we want to identify scenarios that will have a large impact on value. So you don't want to just identify three scenarios where the valuation is going to be entirely the same just because they're, they're very likely. You want to know what could happen in, let's say, a worst case scenario, a best case scenario, some scenario that could significantly impact the value of whatever security you're trying to value. Now, there are a number of factors that we need to consider when we perform scenario analysis in evaluation. First, we need to take a look at the macro environment. We need to consider any changes in economic conditions that could result that are unexpected. So in one scenario, we might want to assume that there's more new housing starts than we considered in our base case, or maybe more hours were being worked by manufacturing workers. Next, we want to consider changes in the competitive structure of the industry from the base case. So what happens if there's a change in the market share, or maybe there's some new technology that subsumes our firm's technology and makes our, our firm's products irrelevant. We might also want to adjust our scenario to account for different operating capabilities. So let's say that our firm is running at a gross margin of 20% and we want to model a worst case scenario where the the gross margin actually falls significantly well we can do that in a two-stage dcf model if we want to and then finally we want to if possible account for changes in a firm's financing capabilities so let's say the firm's bonds are yielding five percent so when the firm issues bonds it pays a five percent interest rate to its uh, its bondholders. And we want to model an environment where interest rates are higher, and so anytime the firm issues new bonds, its interest rate is going to be, or its yield is going to be higher. Well, we could do that. All we have to do is adjust the input on the, the cost of debt in our model, and that would fix that issue, or allow us to account for the, the higher interest rate environment. Okay, so how do we perform scenario analysis? Well, Step one, we need to assess the probability of each scenario occurring. Now, there's obviously infinitely many scenarios that can occur in the future. We want to identify about three or four scenarios and then assign a probability, in other words, a likelihood, to each of these scenarios. Next, we select the scenarios that are most likely. And a lot of the time, We'll use our base case, so the, the initial scenario that we came up with where we had some basic inputs, and then we might want to include a best case or a better case, and then also a worst case scenario that's somewhat likely. Now, if we're using a two-stage DCF model, at this point, once we've selected the scenarios that we want to model, this is where we adjust our inputs to reflect the scenario's conditions. So if we expect to see a lower long-term growth rate in the overall economy, we might adjust that. So we might decrease the growth rate in our DCF analysis to reflect this. And then finally, once we've accounted for each of these scenarios in our model, we're going to take the output. So in this case, if it's a valuation, it's going to be an intrinsic value. And we're going to take those outputs and multiply them by the probabilities with which those outputs puts occur, and we're going to find the expected value. So to graphically illustrate this, let's say the firm that we're valuing 
currently has a, a value of $113 per share. Well, if we identify three cases, let's say there's a best case, a base case, and a worst case scenario, and we assign probabilities to each of these with the, ba the base case having the best probability or the most likely probability of occurring, and it, in that case, with those inputs, we find an intrinsic value of $120 next year. Well, our best case might lead to an intrinsic value of $175, and our worst case scenario might lead us to expect an intrinsic value of $75 next year. What we can do is take those probabilities and our intrinsic price per share and multiply the probabilities times the price per share, and what we'll get is an expected price per share. So 20% times 175 plus 50% times 120 plus 30% times 75 gives us an expected price per share of $117.50. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. So in this example, I've built a two-stage DCF model, and we have our inputs here. So I've just assigned some inputs. So weighted average cost of capital, growth rate, operating expense as percentage of sales, tax rate, etc. Down here in the white cells, we have the historical data for our firm. So things like sales revenue, interest expense. And so based on our assumptions, we can forecast our operating expense, our sales revenue, et cetera, et cetera. And this allows us to forecast our free cash flows. So here we have FCFFs and I'm using the two-stage DCF, and we have a terminal value here, and these are the sums of our free cash flows for each period, and down here we have free cash flow in the case where we have a constant growth free cash flows in the, in the terminal value, and then we subtract out the debt, add the cash, intrinsic market value of equity, and then we divide by number of shares outstanding. This gives us our intrinsic value, which I put also up here in cell H2. So we have this model that takes inputs, puts it through all of these calculations, and cranks out an intrinsic value. This is a pretty good model to use scenario analysis for. So how do we do that? Well, we can go up to the data tab, and in Excel we have what-if analysis. And this is a pretty nice tool if you want to perform scenario analysis. So if you click the what-if analysis tab, you'll see scenario manager. Go ahead and click that, and then add. And then we'll call this model, or the inputs that we have in blue, this will be our base case. And our changing cells are the cells that we want to adjust. And as they adjust based on the scenario, they will adjust our intrinsic values. So we'll assume that our weighted average cost of capital will change our long-term growth rate, G, will change, and then operating expense as percentage of sales. Okay. And when I click OK, I have the option to keep these inputs as they are. Okay. And now we've locked in our base case. If we want to, we can add another case. Let's call this the worst case. And the worst case scenario is obviously not good. Uh, we don't want to find ourselves in a worst case scenario. But again, we'll, I'll tell you what, we'll keep the same changing cells and we'll click OK. And this time, we'll adjust our changing cells to reflect bad news. So our weighted average cost of capital in cell E2, maybe that goes up to 11%. And our growth rate, it goes down to 1%. And our operating expenses as percentage of sales, let's say they go up to, oh, let's say 90%. And there we go. And so let's show this worst case scenario. So in this worst case scenario, notice here that our intrinsic value fell to $19.62 versus the base case, 
where our intrinsic value was $58.49. Now notice here that our inputs in scenario analysis are correlated with each other. So whenever our, our weighted average cost of capital changes, in this case it'd be a negative correlation with the growth rate uh, because weighted average cost of capital for our firm is going up, growth rate is going down. But in scenario analysis, your inputs will very likely be correlated with one another and you're adjusting all the inputs at once. And so in the scenario manager, you can actually just toggle between each of these cases and then we can, if we wanted to, and uh, assign probabilities, we could take the intrinsic value of the base case times the probability of the base case plus the intrinsic value of the worst case times the probability of the worst case and then maybe we have some other scenario and we sum up all those products and we get our intrinsic value based on scenario analysis. Okay, so let's summarize. So you saw that scenario analysis allows you to account for likely future conditions that affect valuation. If we want to use scenario analysis in a two-stage DCF model, all we need to do is adjust the inputs to inputs that reflect each scenario. And then finally, our expected value in scenario analysis is going to be a function of the probabilities times the intrinsic values. And we just sum up those products and that'll get us our, our expected value. So with that, I'm going to wrap up. And if you have any questions, obviously, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you.